the entire game and things start to loosen up. This guy about to spill water on Steph's head is Kent Bazemore. Last year he was having fun in the Bay Area, but this year, he's a Laker. This is Kent Bazemore now. What's the moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen? Don't spill water on the chef's head, then leave for the Lakers the following year. It's just not cool, guys. <laughs> anyway, today we'll be going over my five biggest takeaways from the Warriors preseason games. Since I'm usually talking about positive stuff, I thought I'd talk about some negative stuff first here, you guys. The Warriors need to do something about their interior defense against big centers. They're getting beat up badly in this department. And what do I mean? Well, let me just show you. Rotate cross out of things. This is Yusef Nurkic. He's a Bosnian 6'11 center who weighs a whopping 290 pounds. But more importantly, look how easily he gets to the basket against the Warriors undersized center, Kavon Looney. Things on the weak side. Simon starts his third quarter inside his Nurk. Let me play this clip again for you. On the weak side. Simon starts his third quarter inside his Nurk and works it. Sheesh. That's just too easy, guys. It's like taking candy from a baby almost. That just can't happen. Let's take a look at another example. All these pick and rolls with Jokic. This is Nikola Jokic. A couple of years ago, he was overweight and was reportedly drinking three liters of cola a day. Three liters comes out to about 13 cups. Holy cow, that is a lot of cola. But that's a different story for another day. Today, let's take a look how easily he gets to the bucket to grab two points. So that high screen roll with the five man. And then Jokic. Sheesh. Let's play that one more time. Their offense with that high screen roll with the five man. And then Jokic. In terms of getting points for a big man, it doesn't get any easier than this. I mean, he's standing in the key, then takes two dribbles and puts it in the basket with what looks like zero resistance. Okay, I got one more here, guys. Scoring all time. To see them on the same team is amazing, you know. For others, Henrik Dunn missing that. The only thing about Steph is he's just an all-round scorer. Beautifully thrown. Okay, I think that's enough examples for point number one. The Warriors need better interior defense, they're getting beat up on the boards, and they're getting beat up close. Whether or not James Wiseman can bang with these other bigs, or whether Steve Kerr needs to adjust the defense, this is clearly an area that the Warriors need to address. Next off here, let's talk about something more positive. And what I want to talk about is the Warriors offense. Last year, according to StatMuse, when Steph Curry was off the court, the Warriors had the worst offense by any team in the last five seasons. And it's true, guys. I watched every Warriors game in 2021, and every time Steph went to the bench, the hair on my head started turning a little more gray. Not that it's that gray to begin with. Anyway, this season, it's going to be a lot different. I mean, for starters, the Golden State Warriors second unit pretty much outplayed the big three that the Lakers assembled. Yeah, that's right. In the second preseason game against the Lakers, where both Steph and Draymond sat out, Jordan Poole, Otto Porter Jr. and Steph's brother-in-law, Damian Lee, outscored LeBron, Westbrook, and AD 50-47. to Yeah, that's pretty crazy, right guys? Otto Porter Jr. is splashing his threes and statistically is the third best three-point shooter on the Warriors team since they drafted Klay Thompson. Jordan Poole, on the other hand, worked tirelessly during the offseason and is now a part of the Splash family, and Damian Lee, on the other hand, well, uh, he married into the Splash family last year. Okay, that might be a sneaky way of joining the Splash family, but who are we to judge, right? All jokes aside, Splash, 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 the 2022 Golden State Warriors look dangerous at the moment and will only get more dangerous once Klay Thompson is back on the floor. In fact, Steve Kerr recently said, when Steph and Klay are both on the floor with Jordan, we're going to have a chance to go from good to great shots all the time. Defenses are going to have to be responding in every direction. For now, Jordan Poole will be in the starting spot and he's playing so well, it's hard to envision not keeping him there. Next off, what I noticed from these preseason games is that Gary Payton the second needs to be signed. Guys, Avery Bradley is a good call and all, but GP2 is on another level currently. I mean, check this out. 
This is GP2 right here. The ball is flying in the air, and there's one, two, three, four yellow jerseys around the rim. And look what happens next. Here is a shot by Moody and a rebound inside, claimed by Peyton. Yeah, one of the smallest guys on the court, outmuscled four dudes, and not only got the rebound, but got the putback too. Next off on why the Warriors gotta ink this guy to a contract is GP2 is great at moving without the ball, cutting to the rim, and when he's at the rim, he's really great at finishing. I mean, check this out. This is GP2, and he's currently being guarded by Rondo, but not for long. Stop, lob in. That's good bounce pass. Throw it down. Now you see me, now you don't. GP2 finished off the game with 12 points on 7 shots. He's efficient, he plays hard defensively, fights hard for loose balls, and he never takes a day off. Bob Myers really needs to sit down with him to get him to sign the bottom line. Next off, what I realized from the preseason games is the Warriors are going to throw up a lot of threes this season. In fact, they have a great chance of becoming the best three-point shooting team ever in terms of both attempts and accuracy. I mean, in the four preseason games so far, the Warriors have thrown up an average of 55 three-point shots per game. Yeah, that's right. So far in the preseason, the Warriors have been throwing up an average of 50 five long bombs per night and they don't care who's in front of them i think damian lillard dame time summed up my feelings well when he said this after the first preseason game when the warriors threw up 69 trays when you hear the number 69 it's just like man some teams shoot 43s you're like they shot a lot of threes but i think the golden state warriors shot that in the first half it's crazy to think about on my drive home just thinking about the game i couldn't think of a time they shot a two-pointer just a little FYI here, the current regular season record is 45.383s a game, which was set by the 2019 Houston Rockets, and the Warriors so far are looking to blow that record out the window completely by about 20%. And the crazy, absurd, unbelievable thing about all of this is Klay Thompson isn't even back yet. Yeah, the second best shooter in the history of the NBA is still sidelined while watching his fellow Warriors go nuclear. Imagine the three-point shooting when Clay gets back. I mean, Steph will probably take around 12 threes a game. When Clay gets back, even in his limited minutes, he'll probably take about six threes a game. Otto Porter Jr. will probably take about six threes a game as well. Jordan Poole will probably take about 11 threes a game at his current rate. Then uh, Nemanja Bjelica will probably take about four threes a game. That's 39 three-point attempts from five elite shooters. Then you add Damian Lee, Andrew Wiggins, JTA, and Draymond, and you'll have over 50 three-point attempts every game from shooters who can shoot efficiently from beyond the arc. Sheesh. My last biggest takeaway from these preseason games is that the 2022 Golden State Warriors is really going to be a special team. According to oddsharks.com about a week ago, the Warriors are tied for the third best championship odds. But I think with everything that's going on, if no major injuries hamper the Warriors this season, the Warriors are going to be the best team in the league. Yeah, I said it. The best team in the league. And I don't say that for no reason at all. I mean, look around the NBA. The Nets might not be able to play Kyrie Irving for both home and away games. The Warriors' second unit just beat the Lakers' big three. The 76ers are having a family feud. Jamal Murray and Kawhi Leonard are potentially out for the whole season. The Jazz, Suns, and Bucks are there, but I don't think any of these teams stand a chance against a healthy 2022 Warrior squad. It's going to be a great season either way, guys. Anyway, would you like to see what the head coach Steve Kerr could do to ensure a championship to the Golden State Warriors this season? If you said yes, then click immediately on this video right here where I go over the exact coaching strategies that Coach Kerr could take to bring another title to the Bay Area. Click the video, guys. Watch it, enjoy it, and as always, I'll see you on the other side.